guys, thanks for joining us for another video. Um, today's discussion is aimed at exploring how the lockdown or the isolation has affected the behavior, mental health, and education of children. And I could not think of anyone better to have this discussion with than Sister Nakiranda Rahma Raja, the expert on everything with children. So I only have five questions. One, during this lockdown or the isolation, what's been affected the most? Is it the children's education or their behaviors and mental health? Two, do you think the parents are paying enough attention to who the kids are in isolation with and how they're spending their time? What do you could have done? Three, what role has social media played in negatively affecting the children's behavior? I mean, how are we keeping the children safe online? You know, closing schools and lockdown restrictions meant that children have been physically isolated from their friends and relatives. And instead, they've been forced to keep in touch with their social media and some to study online, which has had an adverse effect on the well being of some adults. Or, you know, with the school closures and working remotely, it's been a lot to navigate for anyone, but especially parents. So what tips would you give parents to interact constructively with their children during this time of confinement? You know, we need some tips for help parenting. Five, while some couples are more connected now because of the lockdown, some are really feeling the strain. I'm not getting to what I've seen, you know, people's coming in for support, saying that the lockdown has multiplied existing issues, they've been escaping by not being home, hanging with friends, and it's too early to be with, you know, going to the gym or whatever. But now we can't do that anymore. So it's brought in to focus. All these problems they've been ignoring are causing too much tension, and there is a lot of conflict at home. I want to record it. They cannot stand each other. But you see this conflict between parents can just be as damaging as physical abuse to the children if they constantly hear these arguments that never get resolved. So my question is, how do you protect the children from this parental conflict? My name is Sharifa Namsisi. I'm a marriage counselor and life coach. Please feel free to join the discussion in the comment section and do not forget to subscribe. So, Sister Rahma Nakirandaraja, would you kindly introduce yourself? Thank you very much, Sharifa, Sister Sharifa. As she said, my name is Rahma Nakirandaraja. I like to be known as a teacher and a mother, and everything in between there, everything children. I trained as a teacher, a secondary school teacher, and uh, I have worked with teenagers for over 16 years and uh, education is my passion and for me education is not just class sitting and teaching and imparting knowledge it's helping shape the individual it's um, I think the best way to put it are uh, teachers are some parents like the ones that raise your children while they're in school because we actually spend the most time with your children. Um, so yeah, that's my passion. You see, this is why I was telling you there is nobody I would rather have this discussion <laughs> with than you. I'm really happy to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. So I'll just get right to it. I have five questions for you. So number one, during this isolation period that we are still in, what has been affected the most? Do you think it's the children's education, their mental health and behavior, or, or have they been equally affected, or there's been one that's been affected more than the other? I believe life in general is education. Because what, what maybe is, uh, what everyone thinks is education is the fact, the schooling bit. Schooling, right. Yes, schooling bit. But education is all over, it's character shaping. And um, education is not just the skills like SST, science and what, no. Education are the skills that your child gets in school, like uh, creativity, communication, uh, teamwork, and critical thinking. So if that is education, then yes, it has been affected. The schooling they can pick up on, but the skills. Right. Um, the mental health, definitely. Definitely, because no one understands children. No one speaks for the children. 
and uh, you, you saw the jokes on uh, social media 42 days a uh, 42 marriage test yes uh, oh yes but who thinks about uh, these children who are stuck with us we are not tolerant we are demanding we have expectations right. we are not patient and uh, right now we don't even know how to deal with our children the corporate class yes. they are not used to dealing with their children they have not dealt with their children they see them in the morning for breakfast drop them to school and then they pick them in the evening then have them maybe on the weekend managed by the maid also mm -hmm. and sunday where the christians take them to church in the back or visit go to a cashier mall take them so that is not interaction and they have this all throughout and they have holiday classes so um they're faced with people they do not know and the children do not know their parents as active members i mean active participants in their lives mm -hmm. except go brush your teeth go do this go do this so imagine if you were locked down for 42 days with someone you're not familiar with our parents will tell you i don't know what to do with these children i give them work and they're done and they still want to do something and the children are frustrated because they, they're seeing their parents they seeing too much of their parents yeah. now for teenagers they're almost adults yeah. see the exposure is just the same now the primary children are suffering one parents have high expectations of their education meaning the schooling mm -hmm. so they've been put in zoom classes zoom classes do not apply for most of our learners you can't because it's only visual education the children are watching and it does not apply because most of our learners were not prepared for these classes they were prepared for a class where a teacher stands in front of you and dictates i call it preaching so you're pushing uh the school is pushing they're, they, they're sending modules home they have to write them out and now uh, uh, because parents are comparing notes they're like oh sure if my children can mop mine can't beginning tomorrow you have to mop there is no foundation for housework there's no foundation for chores and then the children have to start yes and then now because we have those family whatsapp groups and if someone posts their children who are very perfect they've done their homework they've made their bed they've done that and you're like oops mine nowhere okay they have to start in a weekly and if they don't they're frustrated because they're competing with your cousin like you said the schools have a routine that they usually follow but as parents this is new to us this is all new i mean lockdown 42 days we don't know what to do with them I have my own routine. I want to work in the morning. I want to, you know, I have my Quran classes. I want to work out and then I have my time on social media. But do I have time for the kids? No, you don't because you never, they're not in your original schedule. Now, but that leads to the other point that you brought up, behavior. Yes. What do you think? You think that behavior is being shared? Oh my God. Yeah, they're learning to shout. They won't, they won't shout at you, but they'll shout at their boys. They're learning to vent. They're learning all the negative characters that you have to offer or the positive ones if you are nice to them. So right now, our parenting is on the block. Right. Our parenting is under scrutiny. Yeah, our parenting is under the microscope. Like, who are you as a parent? So who are you as a parent is exactly what comes up after all this. Who are you as a parent? This is a test for us as well. It's a test and it's a behavioral test because you are shaping your child. Mm -hmm. You're shaping someone's wife, you're shaping someone's husband, you're shaping someone's employee, you're shaping That's someone's true. boss. Yes, you're shaping a parent. Right. And how much, like, this is the most you're going to spend with them because come after lockdown, schools are going to rush them. Everything is going to move at a very high tempo. They, they, they won't even realize who they are until the end of their schooling. Education system is in shambles. We have two S1s. Then we don't know where the class was, where these ones were. And then we have children that are past the age. Next year, the child is due for primary. And the child can't read. Now, their babies who are three-year-olds and they'll be going to baby class. So that's the same level of education that your would-be six-year-old is. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the pressure? You're going to put this child? And I think that takes me to my next question, where I wanted to ask you if you think parents are paying enough attention to who the kids are with and what they're doing with them. Because some of us were unlucky that we had the uncles with us when the lockdown came. I mean, do you know what 
these children are doing with these uncles, with the aunties, with the cousin brothers, with their cousin sisters? Do you do you think parents are paying enough attention to this? Or like you said, we are locking ourselves out. I let the maid handle that. Let cousin Hundi do this. We are judgmental. Then you want to cover Jabikola, you know? So is this a problem? Or you think it's sorted? Kwanga wali wa bantu abajo bima. Alright. I have green green news for you in regards to that. For starters, let me take you back to 2020. Yes. We had teenagers home without supervision yes. for a while. And then they were exposed to call it unlimited internet with gadgets. Now, when I say teacher, I I I, I say and everything that comes with it. Yes. I work with children. And Sharifa, you cannot believe how many parents have come to me with their children. I'll say the classes so that you understand the gravity of the situation. P4, P5, P6, and sometimes P3 who are addicted to masturbating. How did they do this? Well, the online classes were going on, these kids were chatting. Remember the phones they use for studying? Are your phones? Many of us are on those WhatsApp groups of uh, Sega, Kuja, what, what. So they share porn. Right. And for two hours a day, your child has access to your phone. So they watch. Well, yours may be disciplined and mine isn't, or the other way around. Mm -hmm. And children share. So when they see something, they share. So that's how they started a network of porn. Mm -hmm. With the network of porn came, after a while, they started getting excited. And they started to try out on themselves. Mm -hmm. They started to try out with their own hands, then with their who's next to them? Cousins. Closer. Who's next to them? Exactly. Their siblings. So the older ones and the young ones, they tried it out. Why? Because the parents have not told them about incest. My children are too young. They can't know about that. So with this lockdown, remember we had them in our houses. They weren't even going outside to play. Did they have access to porn? And then what happens? Do you see where this is going? Oh, yes. Yeah. Here you have, uh, I, I do not want to say bluntly, but here you have people whose bodies and hormones are raging mm -hmm. and they're closed down. And what do they do? How much attention should you be paying to this? Because I might feel like, no, my children are safe, you know, cousins so and so are in, but they can never do it. Or, like you said, the nannies. Or rather, Shamba boys, you know, because they are safer with them, so we think. How much attention should parents be paying to these people that we are in lockdown with? I would simply say, trust no one to no. your children. I'm with you on that. Empower so. your child. And we're not even just looking at maybe sexual abuse, we are looking at emotional abuse. That's we what are, we ignore the most. Yes, we're looking at psychological torture. Just someone watching pornography in front of your child, even if they don't do anything physically that alone is abusing a child serious damage serious damage that alone is serious damage then our children should also be protected from negativity like the maid's bad moods your sister's bad moods your uncle's bad moods everyone's bad moods the children should be your children so you as a parent have to look out for your children you have to put measures in place that you know your child is happy. Before, I used to be a presence parent. Okay. Yes, because that's what I knew. I was raised by a single mom, very hardworking. Mm -hmm. And uh, being the last one, I'm the last one by the way, <laughs> my sister was much older than I was. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, a brother, a sister, then brothers, 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 then I'm a sister and myself. Mm -hmm. So I was much younger than everyone else. Mm -hmm. And our house always had uh, relatives as we with our culture, they were always very many people in the house. And my mom was there, she worked Monday to Friday. But on Saturday and Sunday, you felt her presence. You got out all your makers, you sat. She used to play games with us. Because there were no phones then. <laughs> I was about to ask. There were no smartphones then. <laughs> Maybe they had the equivalent. She could have gone to her friends or whatever. But we felt her presence. My mom used to go to the market every Saturday. And she would go with, her, with one, of course, we used to dodge that because she would make you walk. But as you walk, she spoke to you. Yeah. You learned where the onions were, the tomatoes were. She made you shop 
onion from this corner, tomato from the other corner, then she goes home to cut all her clothes, arranged basins, like 10 basins. Mm -hmm. So you wash, you wash, you wash, like all the way up to the end. I remember that. Until she had the clear water, mm -hmm. and then she would play games with us, she would sing for us games, then she would tell us about that Saturday. Sunday would sleep in and then she would cook something. She was, that was it. Because I remember the one of the vivid memories about my childhood was how my mom used to make chapati. Um, you know those stoves, the old stoves yes. that had the central flame? Yes. The ones you pop at with the pin. Yes. You were not allowed to. I do not know why she always used the stove because it was the option of the skewer. Yeah. I think there was a hook until I got electrocuted. I was one very interesting child. <laughs> So she would make very thick chapatis out of a packet of two kilos. She would make eight chapatis and she would cook them on that stove and they would come out all brown and layered. So it's those things. If it was rolling chapatis, she would give us small bowls, we roll them on the ground. So weekends, my mom, she was present. Uh, when she came back from work, it was a bit hectic. There were no border borders, so she'd walk, and it was hard being who she was seven children plus no extended family, and she was the matriarch. Yes. But even when she came back home, we had routine. When she came back, she would, we would all sleep. So that was parenting. She made do with what was available for her then. So I am who I am because my mother made the time. So there we are, there we are. What are we exposing? Oh, then there's also the thing of like, everyone has ne like Netflix is now a, a thing to have. Mm -hmm. And the parents are like, no, my children never go to my content. They only watch their content. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, <laughs> there's no guarantee. <clears throat> there's no guarantee. How do we interact with our children constructively? I mean, we have two days a week, two days a week, Monday to Friday, I'm not around. What am I supposed to do in two days? Most parents, actually most parents were the top performers in their class, were the best, best behaved students, were the this, the this, the this, the this. By just being Mr. Perfect and Miss Goody Two-Shoes, you've already cut out your child. Setting the bar so high for them. Yeah, because there's only good coming from you. I mean, how will you understand what's right? What's it? So when I'm, when I'm giving, when I'm doing parenting, do you call it parenting therapy? Yeah, I think you did call it that. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm helping out with parenting, yes. I usually tell them, make up some of these stories so that your child learns from this. When you have a child that's not completing homework, remember a time either you or your friend did complete homework. What happened? Make up a story. Don't say, for me, I always completed. Because you say, I always did my homework. Your child is not doing homework. So you have nothing in common. Even if you're the best student, tell, tell of a time you struggled. And now you overcame that. That is relatable. If you have a child struggling with hygiene, maybe you didn't struggle with hygiene, but maybe a friend did. Yeah. And you're like, huh? You know, you remind me of my friend. <laughs> my friend Musa. When body together, he hated Shari. So every time you don't like Shari, I feel like calling Musa and telling him, come and see your son, but don't worry, after a while you're going to shower. You'll be so be positive. You're like, my God, you have not showered again today. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure I'm like, my, you remind me of Musa in primary school. He never used to shout. You see, that's a light moment, but it's teachable. And it's teachable. You know, it's light, but he's learning something out of it. Exactly. And then the other thing is that spend time with your child. It's as easy as pulling tea. But even when the children start spending time with them, Thank you for that. And lastly, mm. this is like the biggest issue that I, as a counselor, am finding with parents. How are we helping these children? How are we protecting them from parental conflict? As you know, there's a lot of strain for some of the couples during lockdown. We cannot sit in the same room for even five minutes. You know, lockdown in jail, all the small, small, eh? Because I mean, we are getting out and I'm all looking nice and sexy. Like all the small, small issues. But the kids are watching, right? Gwen solo was at Bakulaba, na yo o sources zamu no and umana chida tata kuvumi aboko. The mele yangu ni wa. Those are small, small things. There's a lot of conflict. Worse than what I'm even talking about. 
Umuntu ya dangiri wa mwengi wa utatabu nyo ya wale katabu nyo ya mwengi. For some couples, I mean, they've gotten closer, they've connected more, they've used this lockdown to actually get to iron things out and all that. Na yungu wa rubo bali ya wa gamba, after this I am out. Siti so gula, na yungu period yungu wa wale wa wa kapi. What have the kids learned from them? Because there's been a lot of conflict. Anybody can testify to that. How can we protect the children from conflict? We need to have full mangue, we had our safe space. You know, if there is something going on between us and we need to discuss, discuss something, to get them to say, I'm going to be okay then. But right now, we don't even have that. We can't hold it. We can't hold it. We can't hold it. We can't hold it. It's not a case. If it's the husband, he will throw a cup or something, you know? How are we protecting the kids from this? Parents are just teenagers that had children. That's what I keep saying. That's all. Yeah. Teenagers that have children. So when you say, how does someone react? What is a child to you? Do you know what your role as a parent is? Do you know that the impact of your actions to a child? Do you? Because everyone, and unfortunately, I would hate to stereotype, I would hate to hand blame to one gender, but the women take the cup. We are the winners. Oh, no, we are the winners. <laughs> because uh, usually we are the provocateurs. We are. We are the ones that uh, do the moods and what. Because we are trying to deny what our role is. We are the nurturers of these children. We are the nurturers. Right. We are the mothers. If you go back to your basics in primary, what does a father do? Go to look for money. What does a mother do? Say to take care of the children. So we can't deny that role. And this trying to say that he's their father, he's their father. It's a good thing he's their father, but you are the mother. You are the nurturer. The responsibility is Mostly. So how can you do that? I think people are staying in the worst relationships for reasons A, B, C, D, F, G, X, Y, Z. Yes. People uh, have married the wrong people for reasons A, B, C, D. Married for the wrong reasons too. Yes. And then people are seeing other people. People are, like you said, there's so many things going on. How do you protect your child? By remembering that you're a parent, by remembering that whatever you do is coming back at you. It's a boomerang. Teach a child to disrespect a parent, you'll be the next person they disrespect. Because you think you're teaching them to disrespect their father, you're actually teaching them to disrespect adults. But this habit of projecting expectations from movies, from uh, social media, from onto their husbands. Now, you want your husband to be like Brad Pitt who carries the children, <laughs> who changes their clothes, who does this, and then you complain. He doesn't want to spend the time with you. He wants to spend the time. So you force family time on someone who's who was raised differently. And sometimes it's the other way around. Men expect their wives to come, make their juice, sit down with them, because that's what he grew up seeing. He grew up seeing his mom next to the dad, bringing that beard jug with katunda and sitting down, and then they all sat. That was family time. Whereas you grow up with a single mom, serve yourselves. For you to have a good present, you have to fix what you did in the past, if there's need for fixing. And then you have to work towards the future. Because if right now your child was exposed to porn and you take away the gadgets, that's not a solution, is it? If you've been shouting at your husband and you say stop quarreling in the house, you have not taken away the negativity. You have just silenced both of you. But the children will see it when you don't speak to each other. And sometimes it's what's very amusing that this part of our families maintain family time, sit in the car and not talk relatives to the beach, or for fish, not talk to each other during bath. Lucidica, to be able to see. With the children. Yes. And they teach the children. So they go up to the movies. You've seen them, oh yes. Yes. They come out of a big car or a small car or they're walking and everyone is at it. And then they sit to dinner and everyone takes out a phone. And then all the children take out phones. That's the new normal, by the way. Yes, but it's not right. No, no, no. It's not right. I need your contact. I don't know how people are going to reach you, but they clearly need to know how to reach you. My phone number is 0772-344-713. And when you call, please introduce yourself with where you got the number from. <laughs> because it would be easier than because I get so many calls. Yes. So it's like, hello, hello, this is Sharifa. Yes, Sharifa, how may I help you? 
and someone says the problem is that okay I'm trying to place a Sharifa. Yeah. Just say this is Sharifa, I got your number off. Like I said, I wish we had more time. I wish we could talk about everything right now in this one video, in this one discussion, but we can't. So for more personalized assistance, please reach me on my...